to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Joined as always by the Deucers, over there in Deucers Alley, deucing it up. That's what they're doing. And uh, we are here with a waiver episode today. Very excited to talk waivers. There's a lot of names, Jason. I heard you saying that this morning that you yeah, were kind of. Uh, I think it's a deep waiver pickup. It's not a. It's not an elite like there. I, I don't see a Puka. I don't see a right. Kyron from last year. Some sensational breakout superstar. But there's a lot of depth. There's there there are a lot of running backs that are worthy of being rostered, and and obviously we'll get into it. But week one waivers is like. I mean, this is an important time in fantasy football. You look back at championships, and then you can usually trace something that happened to week one or week two waivers. And I don't, you know, I don't know if you can know in week one whether there's a Puka there or not. I, I think when sure. we picked up Puka last year in week one, it was optimism, but not any sort of expectation to what we got from Puka Nakua. Like maybe, maybe that is Jamison Williams this year. Maybe Could that be. is Xavier Worthy. We uh, we have a lot of season left in front of us, so we're going to break down our favorite waiver pickups at every position. We have waiver rankings on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, so you can see them on there. And for the first time ever, we have customized waiver pickups for your team in your league as part of the Ultimate Dashboard, which is one of the Foot Clan member perks. You can learn about that at jointhefoot.com. That is brand new for the in-season uh, tools and resources this year. You, if you have a, if you have a team in ESPN Sleeper or Yahoo, you can sync your team and your league, and it will give you a dynamic list of who's available based on our waiver rankings and uh, who is available in your league. So it's custom because everything is contextual. You know, a lot of our pickups, we're going to give you our rankings, but do you need a running back? Do you need a wide receiver? Is tight end, is the Isaiah Likely sweepstakes going to be for you? These are all going to be questions we answer. Yeah, and when we talk about, you know, oh, picking up J.K. Dobbins, you might be like, well, he's not available in my league. Well, sync your league with that tool, and you can see all of our waiver rankings of who is actually available in your league. Uh, you can follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers. Follow Jason at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. And if you want to be a part of our Discord, Papa Josh over there running the Discord, um, you can go to ballersdiscord.com. Will that take you right there, Josh? It's uh, ballersdiscord.gg, I believe. Uh, for real? Yeah, for, Discord for, uses a GG. That's for weird. good game? Yeah. Uh, by the way, ballersdiscord.com well, okay. is what you can go to. I just <laughs> I just verified that. That, that works fine. So um, good yep. game, Josh. Yep, works great. All right, let's get into the recap. We had a Monday night football game, the 49ers. Man, they looked good. Stupid. Without 49ers. Christian McCaffrey took on the New York Jets. Wait, what? Who? <laughs> oh, man. No, Mike. no. McCaffrey, he, he's super healthy, and he played football last night. Right, guys? Right? I mean, really, right, that, guys? That, that, was, that, was in a, that was the NFL slash fantasy football slash week one mayhem to the nth degree. I mean, to, to have to have a last second report, like we should just cover that part of the news now in the yes. context of this recap, because it was it was brutal. It was as bad as it gets. Like in the leagues where I have McCaffrey, I'd moved him into the flex. That's something we advise so that you have the ability to put a wide receiver in in an emergency. I looked at those teams. I always want to plan for the contingency. The last thing you want to be doing is get caught without Christian McCaffrey on Monday night. But when you think about the real pivot options you had available to your roster, you would have been talking about Juwan Jennings. You would have been talking about Kyle Juszczyk. If you didn't draft Jordan Mason for that roster with Christian McCaffrey, which, you know, not everybody could do, you were in a real, real tough situation last night. The 
you know, Xavier Gibson, zero. Isaac Garindo, zero. So I know a lot of people that were destroyed by the last-minute news that Christian McCaffrey would be inactive, that Jordan Mason would get the start. This was a shocker. And uh, it, the only way that it wasn't a complete and utter surprise is that Mike and his League of Records team oh, yeah. has Christian McCaffrey <laughs> on the roster. Mike, I, Mike took a very wide stance and yeah. said, anyone free kicks. Yeah. Anyone out there free kicks as he spread his legs. I see. Yeah, to be I mean, kicked in the cojones. Yeah, just God, what a brutal it's, week for you. Like it's I lost, pulverized, guys. I said this yesterday. Read, read your lineup. We said we talk about <clears throat> yeah, league yeah, of records. Pull, pull it up, I, and while while you with pull the, it up, the guys that actually started. No, just well, your whole team. Yeah. So while you while you pull up <laughs> your lineup, just so we know who to avoid. Um, just so that everyone can enjoy your pain. I'm sitting at okay, the lunch table right. yesterday. And usually I would be tilted off the face of the planet because I, I came in a little shallow in my League of Record team. Right, right, right. And I lost Puka. That's brutal. And I lost Najoku. And I'm sitting there happy as a clam because I'm not Mike. I mean, I had the Jordan Love, Christian Watson stack. That's toast. Uh, McCaffrey didn't play. Javante Williams is probably toast. Uh, Michael Pittman, 40% target share, but 31 yards. Uh Mark Andrews and Marvin Harrison Jr. combined for 3.3 points. Uh, Higgins is on my bench. <laughs> you well, lost he's Higgins. also on the You bench. lost McCaffrey. Yeah. Like the, the in a three keeper league between my three keepers and my first three picks, I scored about uh, 11 points. <laughs> oh my god. Goodness gracious. <laughs> what was your comment in our chat last night? You were like, <laughs> you know, I lost Puka and I had, but I spend all my day just being thankful I'm not Mike Wright. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how it feels right now. It's, I mean, it's like, this is it, not only am I in, I in a place of week one, just ultimate tilt fest. It's not like, Hey, one thing went really wrong. Week two will bounce back. I'm like, my, my team is a disaster. Yeah, like it is you, an absolute disaster right now. We but, say don't panic in but week we one. But we will rise. But Mike should panic. Um, yeah, we say don't panic in week one, but we don't think that that's going to happen to you. No, no, that is... Um, you should panic. <laughs> that's like... Uh, what the Not Tommy Boy. What is the... Where he keeps falling down the mountain. Oh, that was black sheep. Black sheep. <laughs> Stay strong, Chris Farley just keeps tumbling and he grabs a root and then he keeps going again. Yeah, the root was Christian McCaffrey last night. So and then in, he's like, no, nah, man. Oh, also, I'm probably not playing next week. Enjoy um, that. If well, you, if you had Kittle and you had Ayuk, you were disappointed too because Ayuk saw limited uh, participation. Juwan Jennings was the leading receiver. Um, Ayuk was only two for 28. Which, which he to should be have fair, I was going to say, he, he had a touchdown. I mean, he dropped a ball in the end zone. If you didn't watch, it was brutal. But, you know, the, the opportunity for him to have a good game was still there. So Jordan Mason was the story, 28 for 147 and a touchdown. He made the Jets look silly, as did all of the play calling by Kyle Shanahan. It was, it was just – it was on par with what we saw from the – Rams in terms of at times in the game they were just dissecting dissecting the defense so well obviously they didn't win their game but the Jets I mean what were your impressions of of seeing Aaron Rodgers I saw the chart today <laughs> the passing chart and he did not target the right side of the field one time like if you watch this game it was Brees Hall to the left it was Garrett Wilson to the left and no one else was targeted Xavier Gibson was on the field in the slot the majority of the entire game never saw a target. I don't think it. It was funny because I, when I turned the game on, I I missed the first couple minutes because of life, and so I turned the game on, and I, my first chance to see the Jets was their first drive that was that was really nice, where they overcame they a couple scored? Th third and longs, and he was finding Garrett Wilson, and I, I mean, Brees was running well. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I've been I've been a doubter of the Jets' offense and of Aaron Rodgers bouncing back to who he used to be, and I was like. I I I was so happy and ready to take that L because they looked so good that drive and then they I don't they didn't look good another time the whole game now some of that we got to keep in mind this Niners defense is awesome and the Niners looked on all three phases they just looked perfect 
Um, the next three weeks for the Jets, I think they will win all three games. So yeah. So whatever you want to say about how their offense looked, your week one with Rodgers, and uh, the 49ers hey. just whooped them. Hey, here's the good news. Silver lining, week two, you still have Aaron Rodgers. That's yeah, a, I mean, that's, that's a win. As a Jets fan. Yes. Yeah, no question. Brees Hall, 16 for 54 on a touchdown on the ground. That was inefficient, but he got all yeah, the work. And then Brees caught five for 39. Yeah, he did. And um, that was the story of the game. The 49ers just kind of locked in after the first quarter and made it really hard on the Jets. Yeah, Garrett, I believe, had four receptions in the first quarter and then finished with six. Yeah, yeah, he uh, he did. And Debo was really, hey. really active, by the way. He was the secondary runner. You did not see any opportunities for Patrick Taylor Jr. or Isaac Garendo. They had a couple of snaps, no opportunities. Debo is really the next man up at running back, and the news that we have right now, you're not going to like it. But Christian McCaffrey is not a guarantee for week two. He's probably even more of a likely going to be on the bench. It's just a matter of who you trust, Andy, because if you watch <laughs> the press conference with Shanahan, um, and the, he was asked about – uh, he was asked directly about the report that it is unlikely Christian McCaffrey goes in week two, and Shanahan says, "I'd like to know who, um, you know, who told you that. It must be God because I didn't know he wasn't going to be able to play until today. He's doubling down on I did not know he until today. He had to. So, so there was there was this whole rigmarole. <laughs> what happened is after the game on the field, Jordan Mason." You know Whoopsie. the star, the star of the game, the, dude. The, the guy is on the highest high that I'm sure he has ever experienced in his life. What a moment for this man, for this human being. Just so he's on the field, he's being interviewed, he's happiest as he should be, and his family's yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, the the man is he is pure dopamine. Yeah, and so he was asked like, when did you find out you're going to be starting? And he said, you know, he found out on Friday he'd be starting, and blah 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 blah. Whoops. Whoopsies, yeah. because um, by the time he got to the press conference, this poor, soul-sucked human being looked so sad and was like, I shouldn't have said that or whatever. He obviously got a a, a chewing out um, because now I'm sure the Niners are going to be investigated for um, the injury reports or whatever. You he, know, he, you know, and Shanahan came out and basically clarified. He said he didn't say that. Maybe some of the other coaches did it to pump him up, and that there was, you know, he had told him that he knew that he would get a lot of work this week because McCaffrey. They need to manage the injury long term right now, and we're going to talk about it in waivers. So I'll press pause. But long term, we need to discuss the McCaffrey situation, what he's going to be like to start this year managing reps and knowing what they have in Jordan Mason. Because if you can go out and put up a performance like that against the Jets defensive front, you have somebody that is worthy of more than the backup role on your fantasy team. I, I, I agree with what you're saying logically. I do not believe that that's going to happen when Christian McCaffrey comes back. We have seen this before. Elijah Mitchell had unbelievably great performances when Christian McCaffrey would go down and when Christian McCaffrey came back. It's just like okay, you're 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 gone now. You this is the Christian McCaffrey show. In fact, I think the we, we saw it here. They want that workhorse back. Like you you brought up the other backups didn't even get a touch. They they scored zero fantasy points. It's because they got their one guy and they game plan for him. And it's like you get all the work. And I agree with that in 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 most situations. But the fact that McCaffrey is dealing with a lingering issue that he says some days feel good and some days feel bad, like doesn't seem like there's going to be a switch that you turn on McCaffrey that he's just fine for 28 carries because he wasn't fine to play in this game. He's probably not going to play next week. You think he's going to get a full workload when he's back in week one? I think that they will keep him out until they're ready to give him a full workload. But, you know, we'll we'll find out. And regardless, I mean, it's it's pointless to discuss because when he's back, you're going to start him. And if he, right. gets, yeah. if he gets 18 instead of 28, he's going to be awesome. This is Christian McCaffrey. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, um, Jason Pukunakua Dude. was placed on the injured reserve with a sprained PCL. He'll miss at least four weeks. We have six main leagues. 
that we share together, and I have them in half of them. So, that hurts. That hurts deep. Yeah, you were not in a good place because of this news yesterday. Puka, going to miss some time. At least four weeks. At least. And uh, Matthew Betts, our injury expert, who has been releasing some really good recap videos on our uh, X account. So these can linger for weeks, sometimes months, and you're going to be holding your breath when he's back out there that it doesn't happen again. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, this is this is a, it's it's worth noting that Puka has dealt with a lot of injuries in his life. Like, you know, obviously he only had one year in the NFL, and he I think he you know he played most of the season, only missed very limited time last year. Um, but he's injured this year. And he was injured a lot in college, and so his play style's rough and tumble. I just want everyone to know, I don't have any puka. And this one is not. This one's not on me. Okay, this just, is my fault. I just want it out there. Yeah, I yeah, didn't no, drag puka uh, anywhere, so I did. This is not my fault. Okay, you talk to Jason. Okay, okay. Malik Willis will start for the Packers. Uh, let's go live to Deucer's Alley and get the reaction of the resident Packers fan. How do you feel about Malik Willis being your starting quarterback there, Al? Uh, not great, Bob. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> um, me neither. This is uh, – what do you do? What do you do if you are Jaden Reed's manager who just had the monster week and you counted on him? Are you playing him with your blindfold on? I, I think you are most likely. He's a flex option this week. He, Like Mike brought up yesterday, he's the manufactured touch guy. He's going to get end rounds. He's going to get screens. Um, you know, Christian Watson, I, I wouldn't start him. I wouldn't start anyone downfield. Malik Willis is a terrible quarterback. Mike, what do you have on Malik uh, Willis? Kyle for has just shared. Uh, so, Malik Willis, let's see. I'm just pulling up. So, we got three starts. In 2022, uh, a couple passes the next year, but he has a career grand total of zero passing touchdowns. It's not a lot. He has three interceptions, so he is his interception to touchdown ratio is zero to three. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's bad. Roma, uh, dude, that's called zero and two for the Packers. Yeah, oh, yeah. It does. It does. That uh, hand it off. Hand it off to Josh Jacobs. I thought Jacobs looked uh, good. So he'll, just he'll hand him have, the ball. Jacobs will get all the volume. And he may get a lot more. Like, if you look at the pass rush that was coming in, the panic mode of Aaron Rodgers last night, like, maybe Jacobs catches a bunch of passes in this game. But I'm just – real quick, because we're going to talk waivers. If you have Watson, if you have Dobbs, I am trying to find an option to not play them. Jaden Reed, I'm okay because of they'll, they'll figure out how to get him the ball. Roma Dunze is now week to week with a mild MCL sprain, which is the same type of injury that we're hearing about Jake Ferguson. A Dunze week to week, waiting on practice reports for Keenan Allen. So, so you know, if if DJ Moore is the only wide receiver out there and he gets the ninety three passing yards from Caleb Williams, maybe that that's be, okay. Yeah, if he's the only wide receiver, that would be great. I mean, we had debates early this offseason about whether DJ Moore getting a quarterback upgrade would be good or not because he was you know a top uh what was he like wide receiver six or something last season um but that was because he was the only guy there if he's the only guy there I'll I'll definitely start him the other news we have uh <laughs> apparently Brian Dable had to come out and say that Daniel Jones their, their 140 million dollar man is going to start in week two against the commanders if the if Daniel Jones looks as bad as he did this last week against the commanders who just gave up four to Baker Mayfield and their defense looked atrocious I don't know what Giants fans can do. I don't know what you will I, – Oh, you know exactly what they'll do. Root for that number one pick. See, I thought they might find a really tall bridge. <laughs> oh, man, that's uh, – you know, it's dark. But there are uh, – this is – like, if you're in a deep league and you're in a – I mean, look, if it, a super flex league as well, Drew Locke should be on your radar. Uh, Daniel Jones I, – I, I believe even if Daniel Jones is terrible, he's going to – play the next few games at at worst but he has the uh he has the thing where they'll they'll bench him to make sure he doesn't get hurt because if he gets hurt a huge a guarantee kicks in just like we saw with you know last year with like Russell Wilson they the Broncos said no we're not going to be on the hook for even more money we're pulling that ripcord right now and you're not playing they so they did it with uh 
uh, uh, Derek Carr. Carr. Yeah. So these these things happen. Daniel Jones. It's only one week, but at, the way he looked, you can't expect that he will be finishing the season. Last year, they were defeated forty to nothing in Week One. The Giants. In week two, Daniel Jones was the quarterback one in fantasy. So I, I, I wanted to bring this up. I mean, he's not my official stream of the week, but I actually do think Daniel Jones was unwatchable. He was so bad. There were there were about four quarterbacks this week that were unwatchable. But the commander's defense will make it a little bit easier. He is still a dual-threat quarterback who has weapons, and I, I think he'll end up with a decent fantasy week this week. Better than the negative four from this past week, you think? I I guarantee it. Okay. It's an ironclad, locked and loaded guarantee. Jason Moore, Daniel Jones. More guarantee. than negative four fantasy points in week two. Uh, we have news that Raheem Mostert and Devon A. Chan did not practice. We I'm will listed. Dude, I, they're, th they're the Thursday game, so that's the it's not a real practice. That's but right. It's the estimation that they would not have practiced. But it is enough that you better be paying attention. I am really worried about Achan. I don't know. I just got the it's you just know because of his fragility. Well, I mean, he got injured. You, you got saw it. You saw him some limping. Butterflies. You saw him limping off the field at the end of the game, and then he's reported as uh, you know as having an ankle and wouldn't have practiced. So yeah, I'm I'm a little worried. He has an ankle. <laughs> That's good. If he honestly, if he has yeah, two you're, ankles, you're not wrong. He's. You just cut out the injury part. Well, yeah, you sure. just shorted, you reported. Y'all know what I meant. Yeah, I just I heard you. Al laughing back there. I assume <laughs> at the fact that he had an ankle. Um, well, that's the point. He needs two right now. He has I an see. ankle. Uh, okay. okay, no, you're uh, you're 40, 40 chest. <laughs> Justin Fields is being prepared to start against Denver. Russell Wilson feels better today than over the weekend. He was wearing. He was wearing shoulder. He was wearing shoulder pads on the sidelines. We, we did. I, we did. Now get was he at the emergency? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. We got an update on that later. That he was in fact the emergency guy because. Oh, thank goodness. If, I thought he was. <laughs> I thought he was in not active and wearing shoulder pads, which only Russell Wilson I would think that about. I I, I genuinely believe if he was inactive, he and still not, he still would have. Had the eye black on just to support, like go through the routine. Yeah, you don't want to miss any moment to prepare. And the Browns signed Kadarius Tony. They they got injured in the receiving game this week. They lost David Njoku. They're working out tight ends. Uh, I don't believe we have the David Njoku report in the news, which we should. Um, I thought it was high ankle. High. Well, there was. Uh, check. Yeah, week to week, I believe, but he's going to be out for a while. And they are working out tight ends, and then. They lost Judy to injury, so Kadarius Tony coming in. That was today's – yeah, David Njoku has an ankle. <laughs> oh, uh, he does. He needs two. Yeah, uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We're going to take a break, and then it's waiver wire time. All right. It is time to jump into week one, the waiver wire. Welcome to the waiver wire presented by NFL Sunday ticket on YouTube TV. All right, Jason, what was your tips and tricks item relevant to this week? Well, if you listen to our uh, top 10 tips and tricks episode, it was take dumps now, not later. And what that means is in week one, in week two of the waivers, you want to go hard in the paint. You, It's not just, you know, a lot of times you say, well, you get more weeks from the players. You know, you, you <clears throat> obviously if you get a player in week one and they play the season, you get, you know, at least 12 more games of this player versus grabbing them in week 10. So that's that makes sense. However, it's the average fantasy points per game of the players picked up in week one. They are higher than the rest of the season. So there will be some stars here. We're going to try to, you know, sift through the gold mine and, and find the nuggets. Um, but uh, you want you want to go hard. You want to go you're, hard in week one. You are mixing so they, many they different, went, different gold analogies. Yeah, like the mine. I get what you're saying. You yeah. wanna, the mine, you're not doing a lot of sifting because no, that's, that's in the, in the river. river. 
You know what I mean? You, you sit- don't sift in a mine? No, no man. No, man. You use the pickaxe. Yeah. You mine. So, like, there are mine. nuggets in a mine. You can find them. <laughs> dude, I didn't know that. Yeah. They Wait, don't have any sifting, sifting in a mine. Sifting is panning for Well, yeah. I know. I, I, dude, I thought they did that in the mine, too. So you bring the <laughs> sifter in the mine? <laughs> yeah. They got, they've got a whole bunch of equipment in the mine. Really? Yeah. But yeah. If, if you put the big rocks on the sifter, it's just going to rattle back and well, forth. Well, we still got to get the stuff sift. off the ground. Our job here is the furthest <laughs> thing from being a gold miner that does exist. So I don't really blame you for crossing your gold analogies. I mean, forgive me for not being a gold <laughs> expert. Uh, I thought I you, you knew metal. About metal. Yeah. Oh, yes, I am a metal expert. All right, let's take a look at the running back position. Last night's game is going to have a big impact on the way we sort out our rankings because Jordan Mason, you know, <sighs> it's going to come down to maybe a difference of opinion here between Jason and myself in terms of whether Jordan Mason will continue to be used. I look at the McCaffrey injury with a very concerned eye. You will obviously play an active Christian McCaffrey on your roster. But one of the things that we haven't got to see a lot of is a healthy player behind him in San Francisco. When we've had it for brief stretches, we have seen some Elijah Mitchell success, especially salting away games. Jordan Mason's performance combined with what I look at as an injury, a re-injury risk with McCaffrey makes me think Mason's ranking here in the fantasy uh, waiver rankings a little bit higher because I think he could start next week I think then it's a big question mark for the week after. He could start again. We don't know how long this is going to be for McCaffrey. And then you combine that with maybe some flex appeal for a while. So does that move insurance. him to your number one He is my of the number week? one pickup for um for the entire yeah, for all of waivers. For for everybody for every position or just running backs? Because he's my number one running back waiver pickup as well. He's my number one overall. Oh, okay. He's my number so, one overall. Now I do think that there's context there. Like if you are you know, obviously, if you have McCaffrey, he's number one if he was out there without question. If you are desperate for help at wide receiver, I, I don't mind you floating somebody like, you know, Jamison Williams ahead of him. I, I meant more of the question of are, are we unanimous? He's ahead of Dobbins. Are we unanimous that Dobbins is the number two running back? He is for me. Jay? Uh, yeah, he's my okay. number two. So that, that's all I want. Dobbins is there as well for me, either number number, number one or number two. So I'm saying, are you looking at this like Jordan Mason is my number one running back no matter what, regardless. If I have McCaffrey, he's number one. If I don't have McCaffrey, he's still number one. Right now one he is for me. Because it's the balance of – you could be right of maybe he starts next week, maybe even a third one after that. But when McCaffrey comes back, Jordan Mason is the backup where J.K. Dobbins – while he was in a timeshare, he was by far the best running back and could be a season-long yeah, help to your I, team. I, I think there is context so balancing there. That. I, I am with Andy that with or without McCaffrey, Mason is my number one pickup. However, if you are one of those teams out there that needs a second running back, you know, you went hero RB. You went and and let's say you went hero RB and you started with Christian McCaffrey as your hero, and then late round you drafted Zamir White and Javante Williams, and all of a sudden it looks like you have nobody, which is, I mean, that's basically your team, Mike. Um, I don't have Zamir. No, I know, but you, you did. You do uh, have nobody, do though. Have nobody. Um, then I would, uh, I would prioritize yeah. Dobbins over Mason because oh. you need a, a, a full-time starter. Otherwise... I would I would I, want the league winning upside of Mason and it's really the re injury risk that is you know, in well, Mason the, the the way that he would win. The the wild thing is like Dobbins had a great week one. Dobbins got ten carries in a positive game script. So if I think about can Jordan Mason end up with ten carries, I actually think the answer is yes. And so in that regard, that's why I put them a little closer. Dobbins is right there though. And if you think Dobbins can win that job, Dobbins can win that job and get more carries on a regular basis. That would be your reason to bend that direction, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I do think he's going to lead the timeshare for a team that wants to run the ball like crazy. They get Carolina next week. So after that, What a competition that's going to be because San Francisco was number one in the league in that last year, right? They passed the fewest amount of times. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you, have, you know what the Chargers' identity is going to be. So you have two teams that are going to run a bunch, which means this is great. If, if they're both on your waiver wire, that's great. Um, if they're not, there are other options. You saw Ezekiel Elliott. 
who is heavily rostered, but he he was the leader of the timeshare. He was got the got the touchdown. You saw Justice Hill. He had six catches, and then you had Jim Harbaugh come out and say verbatim, like flat out, like we did not bring Henry here to get thirty carries. We brought him here to be a piece of an you know seven, eight, nine, ten person offensive puzzle. And Justice Hill's a part of that. Yeah, Justice Hill is a low upside weekly startable player. I, I I think he will be involved in every game, um, but they're not going to be down as much yeah. as they were six, against Kansas City. Six catches for fifty two yards. I don't I don't see that as happening against the Las Vegas Raiders. Full PPR, he's going to be better, yeah. and he was, from what I could tell, the two minute back. And the short, like, yeah, that makes sense. That was something, yes, kind of uh, maybe tough to see for Derrick Henry. Managers. I would, I would rather have uh, McLaughlin than Justice Hill. Okay. Similar archetype of player where they're more a little bit the passing down guy, but I think, I think, I think McLaughlin could win the job and it's, become the it's primary. Possible, I think it's possible. I, I don't, I, you know, Jaleel McLaughlin of the Denver Broncos. How does he fit into the picture with Tank Bigsby, who went 12 for 73 and is only rostered in 11% of leagues? Obviously, I love him, and I always uh, have. Yeah. Yeah, That's kind of, one of your my guys. I, you know, born and raised with Tank Bigsby at my side. Um, he 12 was for 73 was wildly productive. And he was used early, early in the game. 32% of snaps. Very impressive performance. More efficient than ETN. ETN got the end zone um, opportunity got into the end zone, but should have got in twice. McLaughlin or Bigsby? Who? Uh, I don't think so. I agree with. Look, it's these are low probability situations. Like Julio McLaughlin taking over the the timeshare for the Broncos. I think it's unlikely, but it is possible. Tank is not taking over for for Travis Etienne, but he could. He could close that margin even more. Well, and I, I see this as really a roster construction tiebreaker here. Um, if you're looking for a high upside bench asset, then that's Tank Bigsby. Because an injury to ETN, Tank Bigsby he has would the be body a, he where would he, be amazing. he would be an amazing league-winning type of back. So if, you're, if that's what you're looking for, I would go Bigsby over McLaughlin. If you're looking for someone to start, you need him – you know, you like earlier the 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 example of you just really need startable assets. Then I would lean towards McLaughlin. I have Bigsby higher. I don't think McLaughlin can take over the backfield. Okay. Uh, SMA would be too involved. Uh, and the and we haven't gotten production from that backfield in a, a year and in as a bad a game. offense. So I I lean the Bigsby side, which is just wild. <laughs> but let then, me ask you the other side of the Bigsby question real okay. quick, which is the the concern for ETN right if you're if Bigsby is a top five pickup at running back in week one there has to be some collateral damage there in your mind and would you do you believe this is a one week wonder and if ETN is cruising along in the hot hand situation doesn't lean Bigsby's way he'll just have the majority of work or do you actually advise people to maybe look at a uh, trading Travis ETN because he did score the fantasy production was fine you could probably go do a like it. Like, would you have ETN or Connor? You know, do you go make that kind of a trade? Right. So it's, ETN or Camara? There, oh, there's oh. a lot of things up in the air that we don't have an answer to just yet. He should have scored two touchdowns, but he fumbled on his way into the end zone, and then the next play was the 80 yard Tyreek Hill touchdown. And after he fumbled, it appeared that ETN got some kind of got the business from the the team and tank then i believe out snapped him i or out snapped from or, that point or out he, opportunity to, yes. i can't remember what happened exactly but they they definitely were sending a message to etn i don't same message they sent to tank bigsby after right. his fumbles last year yeah. i so i don't know if i would trade him for connor i would trade him for camara Ooh, wow i'm gonna stick with him i think look i don't really like travis etn but I, he he will be the pass catching running back over Tank I think, and assuming he gets right back to being the goal line guy, then he still is a very valuable running back despite a timeshare closing in on him. Kamara's just going to be so good. It was uh, it was Carolina. No, I, I I know. I mean, I was the efficiency was exceptional, but I'm not sure it holds up. Yeah, I I mean this is obviously a team that I believe is going to lose the majority of their games not have not be blowing out their opponents but that's why I love Camara because it doesn't matter. 
it, he's either you know got an easy opponent and he's really efficient in the run game, or he's got a hard opponent and he's getting you know six receptions. All right, looking at some of the lower tier options, all the running back waiver rankings on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Madison, Bucky Irving, Ty Chandler, Jalen Wright, and Jeff Wilson. If there are injuries and a Thursday night game. You know, you talk about the best situation for an inactive, a random inactive. It's Thursday. It's not Monday, Christian. Yeah. It's Thursday. And so if those two guys are banged up, you're looking at a an instant start potential for Jeff Wilson or Jalen Wright. Yeah, and I, I actually think Bucky Irving needs to be in the conversation similar to all these other players. I mean, I would take I would take Bucky Irving over Jaleel McLaughlin. I think he is a more talented running back and Ooh. where he's still you know, not necessarily the the leader. I don't expect him to um, take over, but a Rashad White injury, B Bucky looked great, man. I mean, he looked he he looked really really good, and I was surprised at how involved he was. And it is not even taking anything away from White. White looked good in his own right, but I just think he's a talented back that has the situation of hey, you might be able to start this guy uh, in your flex, and then should an injury happen. I mean, Bucky it was must Washington, be it was Washington, though, and the game was <laughs> sure. the game was blown uh, a blowout. So, if I have Rashad White, I'm making him a huge priority. Okay, but the, but I'm not as bullish as Jason. Uh, the name that I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about him. Uh, Andy, Do you want me to clear this with legal? Uh, it, Alexander Madison of the Las Vegas Raiders was. Like these. <laughs> did, did you, you see say Drake Bell? Did you see the receiving touchdown, dude? That was a good play. It that was. was a great play. Um, yeah, he, but he got his quota for the year. Like we're Tank Bigsby, you know, all the opportunities. Tank Bigsby, thirty-two percent of the snaps. Bucky, thirty-one. Chandler, thirty-five. Madison was sixty percent of the snaps. Like they went full hot hand, which Coach Pierce came out after the game and said, "This is what we're gonna do." Uh, but on top of him, he being the the hot hand for getting a few carries here, he's gonna. I think he's the receiving back, and they're gonna play like they're playing Baltimore this next week. I think that it will. I would project a negative game script where the guy who ran twenty four routes compared to the guy that ran ten routes. Uh, talking about Madison versus Amir White, he's gonna be on the field more. I don't. Does that turn into points? I don't. That's why I said I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about him. But he was of the running backs we're talking about, was on the field the most. This is this is what I mean. There's a really, really deep uh, week for pickups at running back because all of these players need to be rostered. They are all worthy of uh, being rostered. Uh, Alexander Madison is the receiving back, and I agree with you, Mike. That's 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 going to um, push the needle towards him over Zamir, but I don't I – mean, he's really low in my personal rankings. Say, it, does it put – is it just like a, oh, crap – the the Raider backfield is going to be destructive, or yes. is there value in Madison? I, I think it's more destructive. I don't think this is going to be a good offense that's going to be in a ton of leads. Now, their defense can help keep them in games because their defense is really good. But also, the hot hand approach, um, I, I look, this is narrative. I don't know, you know, whatever. Take it for what it is, which is probably nonsense. <laughs> but... Alexander Madison's wife went into labor right before that game. Oh, he had a baby. Childbirth he was, narrative. No, I'm just saying, like, like he was at the game, and you know, while his wife was in labor having a baby, and it's like, you know, what is that? What is the? That's a I'm, good thing. I'm I'm saying or a that bad that, thing. I'm a bad thing in the sense that I believe some of like, hey, m let's make Madison the dude this game. Let's let's give Madison the work. Like he's here missing his child's birth. You know, it, when it comes to Zamir White versus Madison, if if all of a sudden next nah, week man. Madison is, <laughs> nah, did, man, that's the he type of say, coach that Pierce is. He, come on, Pierce is a he did say it's probably coach. nonsense. He did say that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Charbonnet, <laughs> yeah, Charbonnet is just he's a stash. He, no, it, but it, with with Kenneth Walker's abdomen injury, which right now they're taking day by day, Zach Charbonnet may be a play. Nice. Um, he's had the lowest rush success rate of any running back with seven. If or he's more starting, carries. he'll have a better rush rate. Yeah, the fact that Kenneth Walker is currently dealing with an injury it's just totally and it's just a tummy. Currently on Mike's one of Mike's teams. Oh no, not he's not on the curse team. That's he won. Okay, barely. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I will. 
uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's like uh, dealing with Christian McCaffrey. Oh, he's got this calf. It's no big deal. He's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden, uh, he's not playing. Kenneth Walker's never been hurt a day in his life. <laughs> all right, listen, except for on Sunday. Um, <laughs> you can't pick players up without dropping players. And there were, you know, everybody has their, you know, you just did your draft. You're probably attached to some of these guys. Are you dropping? You ready for it? Right. Are you dropping Javante? No, I don't think so. Are you dropping Dowdle if you if you yes. if you need a, if you need a spot? Sure. For these guys, Jonathan Brooks. No. Mm -mm. Chuba. Yeah, willing to. Yeah, I mean Chuba. It was too much miles. Yeah, it was in a timeshare. He's supposed to be the the dude while we wait for Brooks. Gus Edwards. I I wouldn't drop him yet. Chase Brown. Oh, same. I, I would I would Not be yet. willing to drop. Gus Brown for a lot of the names we just that mentioned. was both of those guys combined. Yeah, you said Gus Brown. <laughs> Sorry, Chase Brown. I would not drop Gus Edwards. Okay, all right. We'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back with some wideouts. I feel like this show might be uh, might be really long. There's so many names to talk about. The tippy top of the wide receiver list to me is Jameson Williams and Xavier Worthy. Now, both of those players, we fully acknowledge, are rostered in a majority of leagues. Worthy almost exclusively is rostered. So this is mentioning it because just in case he isn't, you know, you can go out and spend 30%, 35% of fab on him and just take the chance on Mahomes having this explosive downfield weapon. He profiles a lot like Rashid Shahid. Like Jamison Williams, a lot of the names on the waiver wire right now profile the same. They are big play guys we need, with massive speed. We need Mahomes to go down the field. He was one of the lowest uh, air, what, taking shots down the field of the week. Like it was Even the week, even this past week? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, well, Hollywood is going to be back soon. So that's something to keep in mind with Worthy is that the team, the way that they talk about Hollywood individually and the head coach, and the quarterback tells me he's going to have a role. And that means that somebody's going to have a cost to it. It's not going to be Rashi Rice that hurts because of, of that. It's not going to be Kelsey. It would be worthy. Yeah, I, I think a lot of these, the the back of the first, um, top of the second round NFL wide receivers, they are rostered in the majority of leagues. But if you have Keon Coleman out there who looked like oh, you know, yeah, he, he, had the, sure. he had the start, uh, even, even, even Xavier Liguette, I know he's got Bryce Young, but he was he led the team in target share. So it's like if those guys are out there, look, pick them up. So Jamison Williams is seventy eight percent rostered. He he was in discussion yesterday. Nine targets. We talked about that game. If he's out there, he's a must get. He's the highest fab share of all the players that we have. So if he's out there, we're saying twenty five to forty five percent of your fab budget and go spend the waiver priority one hundred percent. You I know, mean, go drop DeAndre Hopkins for him. Go drop. Josh Palmer oh, for yeah. him. Yeah, for sure. Do you go drop JSN for him? Yeah, I would. I, I would. I would. Uh, yeah, 22% yeah. of leagues out there need to be having a mad dash for Jamison Williams. Um, Tyler Lockett, 70% rostered because he That's was a late. Surprising. He was a late pick, but he went in every draft. Seven targets, six for 77. Those are the biggest, highest rostered targets, along with Khalil Shakir, who scored in Buffalo. You get to the lower names. At wide receiver, it feels thinner than running back, but Rashid Shahid, five targets, three for 73 and a touchdown. They only had to pass for half the game. You know, if you're making excuses for Olave on the grounds that they didn't have to pass and he only had two targets, then this was a really good performance for Shahid. Jason, you said you bought in. Yeah, I, I think he, he does have a connection with Carr, and he's got the big play potential where if you throw him in a lineup, you will – you can actually have him help win you a week. So I don't mind uh, picking up Rashid. I, I'm not going to spend on really o almost any of these guys. The rest of the wide receivers, there are enough that I put them all in the same bucket. Um, the oh, the I, Los Angeles Rams guys. Yeah, I would say Demarcus the, Robinson, other than the, the, the tippy-top guys we listed, Demarcus Robinson would be my – priority ad we saw we've already seen him be good yeah for, would, for the rams and now puka is out for would you at least four weeks if you had the shahid demarcus robinson decision i, I feel like they're, they're so different player profile type i would go robinson in that you would both go robinson yeah, I would, no yeah. matter just no because matter the of build. volume 
Yeah. Now, I mean, Shahid's an every down player, so it's not like you're well, like Demarcus Robinson stepping into. No, Demarcus Robinson ran he, the seventh most routes among all wide receivers. Yeah, he was out there every down, anyways. Yeah, Robinson is not going to leave the field. It's just his his opportunity to targets is now just competing with Puka and 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 Tyler Johnson, who who will be their their third wide receiver. He had the bigger game. Five for seventy nine is pretty impressive. Yeah, he he is also. A, I would still go Robinson, but Tyler Johnson is. I think he's an ad in in twelve. 12 or, or, or larger leagues. Yeah, I, I would agree. I go Demarcus Robinson, then Shahid, then Tyler Johnson. Okay. Out of the next tier? Yeah. Um, what about some other players that maybe, you know, Brandon Cooks, four for 40 and a touchdown, they barely had to throw. If he's out there, are you stashing him on the bench over somebody like Deontay Johnson? Uh, or you just hang on to Deontay and hope that there are – I mean, it's hard to look at what Carolina did in week one – with a semblance of wanting anybody on that entire roster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, how do you want Chuba? How do you want Deontay? How do you want Thielen? How do you want even Legat? At least you're like, okay, they can hand him the ball. Well, I just hope, you know, he can break 12 tackles on on the way to a, uh, to a touchdown. He's got the physical attributes that made him a first rounder for a reason. Um, everyone else, I mean, so I, I did post that Bryce Young video, a minute and 30 seconds of so many unwatchable plays. These are balls that aren't, remotely close to wide receivers these are like they're you know it's you don't know you don't question the stat guy if he put down whether that was catchable or not you know what i mean it's like oh it wasn't the, a close call it was easy for the stat guy they, he didn't need his glasses a hundred percent hundred percent i mean they're just a, a, abysmal impossibly bad throws so um yeah i i don't know i just want to dunk on bryce 12 targets for Wandale Robinson. Yeah. Now, does that matter yes, to you, or are we just does. back in the same boat where, you know, Wandale shows up for a box score once in a while and in then disappears? Full PPR exactly. league. Washington. You're, if you're in a full PPR league, I think Wandale and Dorch uh, yeah. from the Cardinals are great assets to go out there and get you five plus receptions almost every game. So Greg Dorch, yeah, he had eight targets, he was six for 47. He, he like he's not a full time player, but I think he is worth a potential stash. I don't know if I'm going to play him yet against the Rams. I want to see what Arizona does with their offense. They are at forward. home, but like Marv was almost an exclusively downfield. That's how he was used. Well, and, yeah, and, that's how he was not used. Well, I'm saying like, no. I know that, what you're saying. That's how he ran, but Kyler was not throwing the ball to that direction. He was throwing everything short. And that so that's Trey McBride area. That's Greg Dortch. Maybe that was a scheme against the Buffalo Bills, and then they're going to open it up. But I think he's worth at least stashing. The Cardinals are favored at home against the Rams, by the way. What? Which makes sense to me. Cardinals, the Cardinals almost beat Buffalo on the road in Week right. One, and the Rams just lost Puka. So I think that this is a oh the Rams lost way more than Puka. If you look at their uh, their offensive line. I mean, they 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 lost uh, one to the IR. One is week to week. Left but, guard, right? Yeah, I mean, they and and I and right tackle. guard. I mean, they 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 had a brutal. They're guardless. The the fact that they had an overtime loss in a just a battle against the Lions. That Star, is starting left tackle, backup left tackle, starting right tackle, starting left guard, starting wide receiver, starting cornerback. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, uh, thanks Vegas, for finding the list because I knew sorry, it was like I, that. I, I wanted to find it because it's ridiculous, and it also it is indicative of, like, Vegas sees this. Mm -hmm. They see those defensive matchups, and the Rams lost. Like, the Rams, um, that should be a fun game, but it's going to be Arizona at home, and I think uh, we'll find out what happens. Deep, we, get Marvin Harrison the football. Yes, please. Deep leagues, uh, the names I'll throw out for you will be Jalen Naylor of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, he played about half the snaps, but with Jordan Addison's injury, that's something that could be uh, some playtime could open up for him. Uh, this one's gross, but I I do think it's worth talking about. Devon Fillet, am I saying that right? I don't Con? think it's that gross, man. It's it's gross because the Denver Den Broncos rookie wide receiver, yes, eight for thirty nine. He's going to be a good friend to Bo Nix to start this year. It was eight targets. He caught all eight of them. I'm saying the thirty nine yards is gross. The Denver Broncos offense looked gross. But he is a rookie who got 
eight targets. He's a rookie older he's, than DK Metcalf. He's twenty six years old. He is a as a rookie. rookie. He is very seasoned. Belay, 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 belay. Yeah, yeah that's like, a delay. So getting to the league, he kept Troy Franklin off the field. That is probably. <laughs> That's why Jason's mad. Discomforting. At him. Yeah. I, I I refuse to pick league. up Vele. That's fine. Solely and only because Troy Franklin should have that spot. Well, it's, it's the coaches spite. disagree. Yeah, you um, are gonna be <laughs> the biggest CFL Troy Franklin fan ever. Yeah, oh man, he so would dominate. Keep your eyes on him. The story of the the tight end position is obviously Isaiah Likely, and that is that is gonna be if you need a tight end, we have that fab budget at twenty five to fifty five percent. Sorry. Um, he was nine for one, eleven and one. There are those out there that would tell me I am a fool to believe in Mark Andrews for one more moment of his career, and that likely is more athletic, explosive, and better in every regard, and that likely is worthy of all your fab to be the superstar that he is. I I would not do that. They ran a just an unbelievable amount of twelve personnel. I'm talking about the Baltimore Ravens against the Chiefs. Yeah, um, uh, a rate that would have like finished way higher than last year's highest grouping of 12, which was the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not saying don't go after Isaiah likely. I just, I'm, I'm more conservative about it. Like I'm not, I didn't, I'm not seeing the, the, the nine for one eleven in the score and rushing out saying, this is it. This is the guy of the week. Now, Jason, I, take dumps early. Is it applied to Isaiah likely? It, it certainly does. However, I would not go too hard. I think I, you know, I lost Najoku in our league of record. I already know I'm not getting Isaiah Likely because I'm not going to. Your, your bid is not going to be enough. No, I'll probably bid about twenty, and I think in every league, twenty-one, some, <laughs> and, and I think twenty-two in every league, someone's going to bid fifty uh, on on Likely. Give and, me the and percentage in every league, chance is worth fifty. Percentage chance that he's worth fifty. That he's worth it. I would say. Is he an every week start rest of the season regardless of well, I, our discussion here? Yes, I do think at the tight end position he will be a weekly top 12 play. So I think he is an every week start. And, and obviously two people in every single league at the least, at or you know at least two, right. need a tight end because they lost Najoku or they lost Ferguson, and those are usually started uh, guys. And then almost everyone else in the league still kind of wants a tight well, end because their tight end crapped the bed. And one person has Andrews. Yeah, so and there's no way that person isn't trying to roll the dice there. Yeah, I you know, so if you want likely, um, drop drop fifty plus fab on him. I I think there is a chance it is worth that, but it seems really difficult to take the tight end position and waste all your fab on it when there are so many good running backs out there. And I I am convinced that Baltimore is going to be a frustrating fantasy situation. It could be. I think I think outside of Lamar, who always stands alone, it's going to be frustrating. I think Zay Flowers will have a week, and then Bateman will have a catch, and then the Likely, new, and then Andrews, and then Henry, and then Justice Hill. Like it, it, it's, it the is, neutral game script passing rates of the Baltimore Ravens, they're not good. They don't want to throw the ball that much. They were down a lot to the Chiefs. And so I do think Likely is very talented. I mean, Andy, you you talked about this before the season. Like Likely's too talented to stay off the field. He is. You you look at the play he made, you know, to to score that touchdown and beat like three defenders, and then the play he almost made where he, you know, one toe. Skied. It would have been a two touchdown week. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he is a talented player, but this is not a heavy passing team, and it's. You know, you're going to have Andrews weeks. You're going to have Zay Flowers weeks. So, I don't know. So, then looking at Isaiah Likely and balancing it, because Taysom Hill is out there about half of leagues. It wasn't amazing. It was 32% of the snaps. But, again, that game script of, of the Saints is like, I don't know what you can really pull from that. I uh, love that the Saints went from 25th in the power rankings to 23rd because of their 47 to 10 <laughs> win. So, if you want to know, this was like on NFL.com or ESPN or something. It was like, Two spot difference by winning forty seven to ten. So you have Taysom out there and Colby Parkinson from the Rams, who he ran like the most routes of any tight end in the NFL. He had five targets, four for forty seven. I I don't in the terms of if you're looking at probability of like Isaiah Likely versus Colby Parkinson, who can turn into a game breaking tight end, it's Isaiah Likely. 
but with what you have to pay with the risk of next week it comes out and Mark Andrews is is six for 85 and Isaiah likely caught three passes. I'm not spending a dime of fab on anybody but likely or Hill. Okay. Everybody else is incidental, zero fab. If I get them, cool. Otherwise, I'll find another name that I kind of like. Even with the Puka injury. I'll spend a dollar fab. Okay, on all right, we got, we got you to a dollar. Are you holding Najoku and Ferguson if you don't have an IR spot? Ferguson, yes. Najoku, probably not. How many weeks do you think Najoku is going to miss? Because if they're working out tight ends, it se sounds like it's more than one. Yeah, I mean, I mean his they, is an, his is an ankle sprain. We, we I when I was looking for it, I couldn't find. All I was seeing was we don't know the severity yet of the ankle sprain, but I uh, ankle sprains are usually multiple weeks. And then there's a few weeks of reacclimating where Ferguson could maybe play this week. Not that if Ferguson plays this week, I'm probably still trying to get a different option. But if he's already back this week, then you'll you'll be back with Ferguson sooner than later. I do think Juwan Johnson is going to be okay. Like I would pick up Juwan he Johnson could, yeah. over a Colby Parkinson because they did not have to throw the football a bunch in this game. Johnson ended the year really strong, scored in this game. That's me personally. I think Jawan Johnson's going to have a role because I don't think they have a lot of pass catchers. Yeah, Jawan Johnson, Colby Parkinson, Zach Ertz, these are all three guys that um, are are fine. You hope they get in the end zone, but they'll probably each finish with like four for 45, which is better than a goose. Defensively this week, the Chargers play yep. Carolina. The Texans yep. play the Bears in that anemic offense. Yep, That looks like a great pickup. Washington takes on the Giants. I don't know if I'd mess with it. I don't think I'd mess with it. I don't think I would. Uh, Seattle takes on New England. And guess what? New England takes on Seattle. <laughs> and it's in New England. And I actually think both are good starts. Yeah, I think New England's defense is, is very, very good. Would you go with one of those two, or would you play the Jaguars against the Cleveland Browns? I would play the Jaguars. I, I really like the Jaguars. They Their pass rush is good, and... If you want to look at who gives up sacks, I Inversely, mean, Deshaun Watson loves uh, getting sacked. Yeah, I was going to say, inversely, the, the, the offense of the Cleveland Browns looked bad and has lost two pieces. Uh, so those are some names. All of the defensive waiver wire rankings you can check out on the site, thefantasyfootballers.com. We want to thank uh, NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Watch every game every Sunday when you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up today at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers. Local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday Ticket for out-of-market games. Excludes digital-only games. Device and content restrictions apply. We do have some quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. I'll kick it off because uh, mine's pretty quick and easy. It is Matthew Stafford who will be playing the Arizona Arizona Cardinals. This is what I am doing. Uh, I lost Jordan Love on Friday night, grabbed Stafford Saturday morning, and he's going to be my replacement. So if you want to ride with me against so, my own team, then let's go. So Puka's injury didn't like no, the Cooper Cup is still there. The, didn't turn you off of Stafford. No, it, it was it was far more exciting <laughs> when I thought he had two superstars, but uh, Cooper Cup. And crew, it's enough. Yeah, I, th I think Stafford's a good play. I'm going to go with Baker Mayfield. He, you know, was obviously on fire week one, uh, but he gets to go play Detroit in Detroit, which we we saw Stafford struggle fantasy wise, but actually Stafford cut him up. You know, he he played very well against that that defense. And um, look, Baker four touchdowns this last week, a fifty point over under game indoors. Maybe he's just good. Well, he definitely has some weapons that we can trust, and Rashad White in the passing game gives him, you know, cheap production mm -hmm. in fantasy. I'll go with Justin Fields. He ran the ball 14 times. This is this is not an endorsement of the player. This is an endorsement of the fantasy scoring of rushing quarterbacks. 14 uh, uh, rushing attempts, pickings for big plays, and a full week of preparing for this game. Don't start him if he's out, but uh, yeah, that's the th if like, he gets the start, Justin Fields is a quick addition that can get you some fantasy points. Agreed. All right. Um, tomorrow, we're going to talk about some player takes from week one that we feel right about and mm, sketchy about. Some things we thought in the offseason and where we're feeling good and where we're feeling nervous. And uh, we'll do Hungry for More. We'll get into the Thursday night preview. 
We'll get into some mailbag as well and then the matchups later in the week, including starts of the week. And we'll bring back Fantasy Faceoff. Oh, 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 wait, we're saying it? I, you know, the demand from the listeners is what we, you know, we pay attention. We know what you like, and apparently you really, really liked seeing one of us ridiculed at the end of the show on a weekly basis. Okay. So Fantasy Faceoff is going to come back. It's fun. It, it is fun, and I, I liked putting those lineups together. People enjoyed it. Uh, we didn't have it for week one, and we heard about it, and we want to bring you um, good content that you enjoy. And so we are listening, and we're going to bring it back. And I think that's it. I think we did it. So if you want your customized waiver rankings with the ultimate dashboard, go to jointhefoot.com. Until tomorrow, Mike, go ahead and hold tightly to that roster of yours, the last remaining few healthy players. Hold them tightly, Mike. It's only week one. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.